Pretty amazing. Now, have you ever dreaded driving to a store just to get curtain hooks or hangers, for example? Well, now a new technology may soon allow us to manufacture those kinds of things at home with 3D printing. It's a new technology that's quite the rage right now in the San Francisco Bay Area, and that's where CCTV's Mark New is standing by to tell us all about it. Mike, well, the mere mention of the words 3D printing requires some thinking outside the box because while many people have seen 3D drawings or even 3D movies, neither technology replicates an object that you can actually hold in your hand. 3D printing has changed that. It's now a matter of economics to make it a reality. This $1,400 box may be the key to revolutionizing the manufacturing industry. Type A Machines of San Francisco is part of a wave of startups that has created a printer that can do this. You can melt stuff and squeeze it out and put it down in very precise patterns. And if you stack enough of these on top of each other, you can make something like this, which is kind of crazy. It really is that simple. If you can t get your idea out of your head and into the computer, then you can get a physical object. Type A Machines printer, the Series 1, recently won Make Magazine's best in class for mid-range price 3D printers. But the competition to be in homes first is intense. Startups are competing with publicly traded companies like 3D Systems and Stratasys. The stock issued by both companies have more than doubled over the past year. U.S. office supply chain Staples also just announced it will offer 3D printing services at stores in Belgium and the Netherlands next year. Technology analyst Rob Enderley says while mass production on 3D printers is still decades away, product prototyping can be done on 3D printers right now at a fraction of the cost. Far cheaper, far faster. So that means products come to market far more quickly. And the little guy inv inventor can come up with ideas and prototype them affordably where they couldn't before. Prototyping is exactly what the Series 1 does best because it prints using an eco-friendly corn-based plastic. Rudder says it's inevitable that other materials will be available for do-it-yourself 3D printing in the future, meaning toy companies, parts suppliers, and virtually any product makers need to beware. Well, this is a hugely disruptive technology to so many people, and the only ones that will survive will be the ones who can adapt fast enough. It will become such an accepted tool that people will say, well, actually, I'm not going to drive you know, an hour away to go and buy a coat hook. I'll print one. As I found out, all one needs is an app to capture your subject. With some computer design skills, you're almost there. Because then all you have to do is hit print and wait for your product to finish. And this is the result, a couple of mini marks. This one took about an hour, and this one about nine hours to print. Handsome fellows, don't you think? You might think that's a long time to print, but think about how long you might have to wait days or even weeks if you were to send out the design to a manufacturer. Plus, if you already have the design in the computer file, all you have to do is push print and wait. This guy here cost about 10 U.S. dollars. Mike. What about uh, intellectual property issues about all of this? Uh, is that going to be a problem, Mark? There are some major, major legal issues here. 3D printing technology has been around for 25 years, but the core patent on it expired just five years ago, setting off this boom of startups trying to break into this market without being stamped out by the bigger corporations who've owned 3D printers for decades. Now someone has already wisely filed a patent for digital rights management because copyright currently applies to the digital files that you use to make 3D objects, but copyright doesn't apply to the objects themselves because objects with a functional purpose mm. are covered by patents instead. Wow. Mike. 